We often hear about the massive dupes of billions of gold, but what about the bugs that normal players stumble on? And what do they do with that information? I got a tip from a guy who wanted to tell me about a dupe he found way back in 2021, and thankfully, he had recorded all of it. This guy says he found the bug by accident while doing a clue scroll step where you have to dig in the penguin area. You can't teleport away by spellbook with the penguin suit equipped, after the step was done, so he clicked his cape to get the penguin suit off so he could teleport away. This is the area that has to do with the Cold War quest, if you don't remember. He then runs to the bank, and when he puts this bugged graceful cape in the bank, he can withdraw two capes back out. Puts the bug cape in the bank, withdrawing one new generated black graceful cape and the bugged cape back out again. Literally just generating graceful capes and all you have to do is withdraw the bugged cape. Now I have no idea which of the steps he took are even necessary for the bug to work. The guy who sent the tip didn't know either. For some reason, the game now thinks of these graceful capes as two different items, not just multiple quantities of the same item. See this screenshot shows two of one type of black graceful cape on the ground and another separate type of black graceful cape, the bugged cape. At first I didn't think it was that big of a deal because I didn't realize how valuable graceful capes are, but they can be exchanged for 32 marks of grace, which can be exchanged to purchase three amylase crystal packs, each worth around 90k. Each cape ends up being worth roughly 300k, and it takes less than a minute to generate a full inventory, which is worth a little bit more than 8 million GP. So if he really wanted to and did this super efficiently, he could make between 4 to 500 mil per hour using this bug. Maybe he sneakily does it for only half an hour a day so he doesn't tank the price of amylase crystals, which I'm pretty sure he wouldn't since there is a massive demand for stamina potions. He could pocket 250 mil per day for as long as it would take for Jagex to patch the bug. But thankfully, this guy was an honest player. He reported it to Jagex and they patched the bug. Just makes me think. There have got to be other bugs like this out there that someone stumbled on and decided to sneakily take advantage of. I also sent this footage to a few other people who know a lot about bug abuse. They think the bug really has to do with a bugged placeholder of the graceful cape in the bank, not so much the whole penguin part. Anyway, a feel-good story about bug abuse, or more accurately, a bug that wasn't abused. I've got more bugs to show you and bot farms I've found right after this. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Every month, they introduce members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and a lot more. Based on a preference quiz you fill out, it only takes a minute or two. Every box of awesome has around $70 worth of goods inside, but costs you only a fraction of the value. You can also preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box assigned to you and before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to one, keep it, two, swap it out for a different box, or three, skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. Bespoke Post actually sent me some awesome boxes. Here are my two favorites so far. First up is Hibernate. These are some insanely cozy slippers and come with the eucalyptus room spray. Second is Puffed, a puffer jacket that folds up into a really small roll, making it super easy to bring along on trips and hikes. It's also incredibly comfortable. So to get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter SirPugger20 in all caps at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash surpugger20. Thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. This next bot farm is not at all what it seems. A tip off just came in about imp killing bots in free to play near the Karamja volcano. Never heard of anything like this before and the tip did not disappoint. Every single world has one account. They all wear the exact same thing. Black wizard hat, red cape, black robe, zami monk robe bottoms. They're all fire striking imps in every single world. I collected over 45 usernames, clearly bot usernames. Killing imps is actually a decent free-to-play money-making method, apparently. The wiki says it's about 68k GP per hour, since they drop a lot of beads and always drop fiendish ashes. All of the bots are combat level 42, but aren't on the high scores yet. Case closed, right? About four hours later, another tip-off comes in. This time, it's about clan wars in free-to-play. World 308. I go to investigate, and things look familiar. Lots of bots, all level 44, exact same outfit as the imp killing bots, and they're steadily running north into clan wars to the exact same tile. There must be at least 50 or 60 of them 
on this one tile. And there are, you know, a dozen or so free to play accounts casually training on them, probably getting the maximum possible free to play XP. And the first thought was, do one of these free to play mains own the bot farm and just wanted a better training method? I started spamming questions like what's going on? And basically no one in the area even answered, which was pretty bizarre. Not saying any of these accounts have anything to do with this, but they all seemed to just accept what was happening and go about killing the bots one by one. Another free to play player even just strolled up and said, can I train on the majors? And every single bot responded, sure, go ahead in sync. What's strange is it's not multi-boxing since the bots aren't doing everything in sync. Like it's a script making the bots run back one by one when they're killed. And obviously we saw them botting earlier today in Karamja. But the owner of the farm clearly has the chat of every bot linked together and is responding. I guess just another day in RuneScape free to play? This is one of the incredibly elusive bot farms I've finally cracked. Never talked about them before, but there are almost certainly farming bots out there. I've gotten multiple tips about sightings of suspicious accounts farming, but it's almost impossible to catch them. They only log in once every few hours in one of hundreds of worlds, and they're only at one patch for a few seconds with multiple farming patches across the game. I've been randomly checking farming patches periodically over the last six months, and this is the first account I recorded that fits the criteria. Username Pling Bling a level 47 with 91 farming, 45 construction, 67 magic, and 74 hunter. It only used the herb patch and then teleported. So I reached out to the bot detector plugin team. By the way, download the plugin for Runelight if you haven't already. And I asked them to search their database for accounts with similar stats. A quick search found 117 accounts. 38 of which had already been banned, confirmed by Jagex. So there is a large farming bot farm out there. And the pattern is pretty clear if I look up the usernames of the ones that haven't already been banned. I'm guessing they're also birdhouse bots since they all have over 70 hunter. It's a very sneaky bot farm, hard to catch, generally hard to detect since they don't play for that long, but the pattern is there and Jagex has been on top of it banning them. Now there's another bug out there that was actually shown to me in game in a live demonstration and it requires a group Iron Man account. Apparently the bug is being abused to profit billions by a few groups, more on that later. So I've created a group Iron Man account, but I'm not in a group. I'm sure some of you haven't made a group Iron Man before. I hadn't. So there's a new area on Tutorial Island with a dock and that takes you to the group Iron Man node which is accessible to all group Iron Men. Obviously group Iron Men are supposed to be able to trade within their group, but not with anyone else. There's also ranked group Iron Men, which the high scores track, and then there's unranked, which the high scores don't track. Unranked group Iron Men can leave their group and join a new group with a two week cooldown timer. So here's the bug. I'm not in a group yet on this new account. If another group Iron Men drops something, and it appears, I can't pick it up, right? See these water runes here? They're on the ground, I click on them, nothing happens. But if I'm then invited to join this account's group, I get to the final screen and I click yes, and while it's loading me into the other group, the other account actually runs away from me, canceling out me joining that group. I have a two tick window to pick up whatever he's dropped. In this case, the water runes. The water runes could be a twisted bow, 100 mil cash, anything. Instantly transferring between group Ironman groups. So it's basically group Ironman mode, but with trading between groups of Ironman. <laughs> now, this only works for unranked. Ranked group Ironman can't join other groups. So this bug is effectively just skipping the two week timer, since you can already leave a group and join another one with a two week cooldown timer. However, it has a big implication for this side market for group Iron Man items. I had no idea this existed, but some groups don't want to grind out rares and will pay GP, or in some cases, real world trade, for those rares to be transferred into their group, which would take two weeks. But with instantaneous transfers using this bug, some of these group Iron Man services are profiting a lot, since these groups that want to buy items want the instant gratification of buying them now, not waiting two weeks. I don't want to give attention to the ones that real world trade and who have been abusing this bug, but I did talk to one of the people who run one of the services that only accepts GP, which isn't against the game rules to the best of my knowledge. Their Discord is just called GIM Shop, 
Even their operation is moving hundreds of billions of GP. These guys are the shop that actually reported the bug to me as well. And as you can see on screen, their operation consists of like eight different group Iron Man accounts that could join your group and exchange gold for group Iron Man items. Each account has a date that it's next available to sell items because of the cooldown timer. It's just crazy what sort of side markets pop up in RuneScape. Are y'all also curious about what happens to all the bots at Nightmare Zone? Like, what are they training for? If you don't know what I'm talking about, there are lots of bots in melee gear with whips at Nightmare Zone. It's crazy there are so many of them that you can actually see them popping in and out sometimes, even though many of them are probably AFKing in their hours on end. I hopped a few worlds and gathered three usernames. Two were in Granite with a whip and one was in Dragon with a whip and these are like combat level 95 to 100s with 80s melee stats and basically nothing else. So I wait three weeks and look them up again. Two aren't on the high scores anymore but one still is and is basically maxed melee stats except 98 strength almost 99. The only reason I come up with as to why the bots would stay at Nightmare Zone until they're fully maxed is to sell a freshly maxed melee account. So how much are they going for? 10 years ago, I would have estimated probably a few hundred bucks, but now it's literally only $80. I guess that's still the equivalent of a bot making about 250 mil and selling it. So I see how it's still profitable for botters. Given also that it only took three weeks to go from low 80s melee stats to maxed, it probably only took five to six weeks total to max starting from account creation. I guess if you ran 10 of these, you're looking at $800 in five to six weeks, if you don't get banned. But two out of the three were, which is great. Either that or they were sold and name changed because those two were slightly ahead of the third account that's still not banned. But let's hope they were banned. Someone reached out on Twitter that they got hacked and their bank was taken by a new method I hadn't seen before. Look at this. A Twitter account by the name of Old Schools RS. They clearly bought lots of followers, almost 7,000, and they basically just retweet the real OSRS account's tweets, which makes them look pretty legit. Like, most of these links actually go to the RuneScape website, except they have a pinned tweet at the top for a free 60-day membership. And unfortunately, the pinned tweet has over 22,000 views. This takes you to a link tree, and as far as I can tell, the bottom three links actually also go to the real websites. It's just the free 60-day membership link at the top that goes to an obviously suspicious link, oldschoolcom scz Just keep your wits about you. And if anything is too good to be true, like free membership here, Watch out. I got a tip that there's a new type of green dragon bot in the wilderness that uses enchanted emerald bolts just north of the Ferox Enclave. Sure enough, there's a bot farm there safe spotting green dragons. They all have rune crossbows and basic snake skin and black dehyde. Basically no stats except 80s or 90s range and 40 defense. They also don't teleport quickly enough, so it's easy to land a teleblock on them while hopping through worlds, even if you're sculled. I killed five of them in a little bit less than five minutes, and the total loot was 300k, about 60k on average per kill. That's pretty good, but it's too bad emerald bolts are dirt cheap.